Hello everyone. Today I will introduce you to you. A science fiction movie. Archive, is released in the US on July 11, 2020. The film is set up in the future world. The main character, George is running in the morning. In a forest covered with white snow. After finishing jogging, he returns to his secret base. Built on a waterfall. As usual, the J2 robot. Is talking to him and working. Just when George, is about to start a new working day, then he gets a video call. On the screen, there is his deceased wife, Jules. Not long before, George receives an invitation, from an engineering company. That day, he takes his wife out. They are happily talking and joking in the car. Then all of a sudden, a car comes from somewhere, and hits their car. George is injured, and his wife, Jules, unhappily passed away. Fortunately, future science technology, can download human consciousness, to the data clouds. Jules disagrees with this technique. But George still applies, to download his wife's consciousness, to the data cloud. So through video calls, he can say one last farewell to his wife. However, this technique has not been completed yet. So from time to time, the stored consciousness, will be weaker and weaker. Then finally disappears completely. At the same time, when using this technique, Users are not allowed to store their consciousness, otherwise, it will make them disappear faster. Luckily, George gets technical help from the company, he can use this secret base for three years. If Jules' consciousness, gradually disappears over time, her consciousness will be transmitted into a robot. He hopes that Jules can live on this robot body. George starts studying this idea. After working for months, he finally makes the J1 robot. But J1's learning ability is pretty bad, after transmitting Jules's consciousness into its body, the cognitive ability of J1, can only maintain the level of a 5 to 6 year old child. While making J1, George does not think thoughtfully. So J1 has no muscle joints. It is not suitable to contain Jules' consciousness. George relies on J1's system, to upgrade and release J2. Although J2 has a higher ability to learning. But its cognitive ability only equivalents to a 16 to 17 year old girl. It can talk to George and help him to do some work. Despite being a robot, J2 can dream. That means J2 can produce its own consciousness. George continues studying day and night. The J3 robot is also nearing completion. And J3's awareness level is equivalent to a woman over 30 years old. J3 has a very attractive appearance. However, its voice is still dry like other normal robots. To fix this, George takes the frequency of sound, as well as the way of talking, and parameters of Jules and transmits them to J3. But he never knows that, all of these have been seen by J2. Robot girl feels jealousy. The feeling of anxiety, makes J2's mood extremely bad. But George does not pay attention to that. To get his attention, J2 starts to make trouble. Once, J2 brings a dog to the base that, making George does not understand what's going on. One day, someone from the archive company, comes to check the computer, to secure the calls between George and Jules. This scares George a lot. He hurriedly hides the robots. If the downloading of consciousness data, is found out, the archive company can sue him in court. But archive people are smarter than he thinks. By their advanced techniques, they discover that Jules' consciousness file is open. They will have to destroy Jules's consciousness, and sue George because of the unpermitted. Using the company's proprietary technology. Fortunately, George still stays calm. He pretends that, he does not understand what they are saying. And he assures that he does not do anything wrong. The archive company has no proof. So they can not do anything. But George knows that, they will also quickly find evidence. So he rushes to work day and night to complete J3. Then takes it away as far as possible. So where is poor J2 now? It walks to the waterfall alone, thinks that, J3 has made George gradually forgets about it. Envy arises in the heart. So that it has some wrong thoughts. It wants to destroy J3. One night, while George is sleeping, J2 destroys the devices in the base. Hearing the warning sound, he wakes up. The glass is broken and J3 is also missing. George thinks, it is stolen by theft sneaking into the base, so he hurriedly drives to find J3. But the next morning, he can not found it yet. But he doesn't give up. He uses two aerial searching devices, to search the entire forest but still find nothing. Late afternoon, he sadly returns to the base, plans to use the device at night, to continue searching for J3. 
Just opening the drawer, J3 weakly falls on him. J3 calls him a bastard. It takes a while for him to calm J3 down. After talking for a while, he finds out that, J2 has secretly brought J3, into the documents room last night. It even tells J3 that, she, is just a substitute for George's wife. In the future, George will manufacture, to replace it with more advanced robots. Like now, J3 replaces J2. In the end, it locks J3 into the drawer. J3 looks extremely weak in front of him. Then he turns to explain to J2. Actually, J2 just wants J3 to know the truth. Not intended to hurt J3's feeling. But George is so angry that, he turns off J2 and even removes its legs. After renovating, he attaches those legs to J3. He also installs a sensory system taste, a nervous system for J3, and an infinite amount of energy. Finally, a layer of leather covers the outside, J3 is completed. Except for its white skin, then J3 looks like a normal human. She is curious about everything in the world, but she absolutely obeys George. About J2, George takes another robot leg and attaches to it. After being restarted, seeing its feet are changed, J2 is filled with despair in her heart. It just wants to be alone, then J2 goes to the waterfall again. Maybe J2 thinks that, only the loud sound of a waterfall, can ease the fear of losing George in his heart. J2 does not do anything this time. It just silently stands there and looks at the waterfall. When J2 wobbles back to base, its energy is over so it falls to the ground. Luckily while walking around the base, J1 discovers J2 is lying on the ground. So it calls George to put J2 to charge. He asks if it's okay. J2 replies it is not feeling well but George feels that, everything currently in J2 is fine and it still works normally. J2 miserably asks that, if he is the one who has his feet changed. Then surely he won't be able to say that. He leaves it alone until it can calm down. About J3, her expression surprises George. Taste, nerves, and senses, are working flawlessly. She even loves music. In the morning when go jogging, George is no longer alone. In the evening, she will dance with George. J2 sees their love is getting better, it could not bear that, any more so it leaves a goodbye letter, and steps into the lake. Actually, J2 is also very important to George. He sees it as his baby. J2 leaves, he impatiently searches everywhere. Until the computer announces, losing connection with J2, George almost collapses. He buries J2 and holds a funeral for it. In the evening, J3 has a breakthrough. Because she is given a portion of Jules's memory data. So she can feel the love between Jules and George. J3 lays on George's bed. George mistakes her for Jules so he kisses her. When he opens his eyes, he sees the person in front of him as J3. So he kicks it out. The next morning, George's boss, Simone angrily calls him. It turns out that, the archive company, finds J2 on the bottom of the lake. That is the evidence that, George steals the company's data. So Simon decides to fire George immediately. At the same time, he turns off all systems at the base. J3 thinks Simone is the bad guy. So she smashes the display. While the archive company people are on their way, George quickly completes the last step in the plan. That is to load all the data of Jules into J3. By doing this, J3 will completely become Jules. Also means that consciousness of J3 will be enveloped by Jules's consciousness. At first, J3 disagrees, she also takes a gun out to threaten George. The archives people are on a plane to the base. George does not have much time, so he tries to convince J3. Finally, she agrees. A data needle is pinned to her head. After a temporary coma, J3 wakes up and turns into Jules. By this time, the archive company begins to break the door. George holds a gun in his hand, he must protect Jules this time. But when the door is opened, archive company people and their plane disappear as if they never come. The phone ring in the base suddenly rings. George walks over to pick up the phone. The other line of the phone is Jules. She bursts into tears and tells George that. Archive company people tell her that. His consciousness is about to vanish completely. Maybe this is the last time she could call him. After listening to these words, George awakes from his coma. It turns out that, the person who died in that accident is George. Jules uploads George's consciousness, to the data cloud. Thanks to the archive company. From the beginning, George always lives in a fictional world, the reason for him to live in this environment, is because they don't want, to let him know that he is dead. 
The moment he knows the truth, the fictional world, and George's consciousness immediately disappears. This is a film showing humanity, under the guise of a robot. The three robots in the film, respectively represent three types of people. J1 represents an optimistic person. No matter how many difficulties you go through. J2 represents emotional girls, who easily feel despair and let go. J3 is the exact opposite, she represents maturity. She is like most women, who will quietly lean on her man. No matter what happens, she also chooses to handle it herself. Although science and technology can do a lot of things. But there's still a long way to go in this mysterious universe. Today's movie is over. Thank you for watching the movie with me. Not forget to follow like and share.